Hello everybody and welcome to this making of video of the song Touch Me from my album Crumbs. In the previous making of videos uh, we have talked a little bit uh, about the story behind the song. We have talked with uh, Camilla Glorioso about the visuals behind the song. In this video I would like to go a little bit more in depth uh, into the actual uh, structure, the musical structure of the song and talk a little bit about my own composition uh, approach to the song itself. Before we start, uh, a word of warning, uh, this video is fairly long and it can be a bit technical in some parts. Uh, I hope uh, many of you will find it interesting, uh, but maybe it will not be the cup of tea for all of you. In any case, feel free to send me feedback or to comment uh, if you like this video, if you didn't like it. Uh, as usual, I always appreciate uh, your feedback. Uh, if it is good feedback, it's even better, but I do appreciate any feedback uh, in general. So, without further ado, let's move on uh, to have a look at the song. And to do that, uh, we are going to shift uh, to the screen uh, where you can see well, myself uh, in the bottom corner and uh, um, the screenshot, uh, the, the mirror window of Ableton Live 10, which is the uh, DAW, Digital Audio Workstation software, that I've been using to compose uh, both Touch Me and the majority the structure of most of the other songs. If you see everything a bit too small, uh, don't worry, because in the course uh, of the video, I'm going to be using this very cool uh, piece of software that I found. It's called uh, One Loop. And it's kind of a magnifying window that I can move around the screen when there will be need to show you a little bit better, um, you know, the, 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 the plugins, uh, the effects that I'm using uh, without you possibly losing your eyesight in case you're looking at this video on a smaller screen. The fundamental uh, melodic line of Touch Me and the harmonic structure is actually very, very simple. Uh, and uh, uh, you can uh, hear it. I'm going to now play the song, uh, a part of the song, but with only some of the instruments activated, uh, the drums, uh, the keyboards, uh, uh, and that's it, the drums and the keyboards. Uh, and uh, so now you can hear the sequence. Uh, you should also be able to see the line. Uh, advancing in Ableton Live, so you can see this is actually a, a live video. So this is basically the, 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 the whole song Touch Me revolves uh, around this sequence. And this is a very simple sequence uh, and uh, you can play it on any simple instrument. For example, if you have a guitar, this is actually a very, very simple uh, sequence. It's basically A minor, then C, then F, then E minor, and then G, and then it repeats. So you can, uh, you can listen to it. A minor, C. So as you can see that the song is actually pretty simple. Uh, this is true for a lot of pop and rock songs uh, out there. What I did try to do in Touch Me is to build on this simplicity and to build uh, layers on top of it, on top of it. And according to some of the feedback that I received, uh, I was actually successful uh, in uh, keeping the simplicity while adding uh, more and more layers. Uh, and I'm going to go a little bit in depth into these various layers uh, as we move on with the video. The intro to the song is based on exactly the same sequence uh, played by two different instruments, uh, a piano. This is the line of the piano and for that I use a plugin by Arturia called, uh, uh, without much fantasy, I have to say, Piano 5. Uh, and for this particular song I use this German Grand Solo simulation. 
and I'm going now to uh, deactivate a second the plugin and put the solo on the line so that you can hear the music. There it is. Now if you pay particular attention, you will notice that there is a little bit of delay and uh, this is the effect down here and what is interesting and I use quite often uh, in my songs uh, is that the delay has a slightly different timing uh, on the left and the right channel so it's configured to the delay is configured to start on the third 16th note of each beat uh, on the right channel and on the fifth 16th note on the left channel and this creates an effect that I personally like very much it's not immediately noticeable but I think the brain actually registers it so the piano is one line and then the other lines are um, the strings the cello in fact is two different uh, um, two different lines one is the standard cello instruments of Ableton here it is you can see it uh, down here nothing particularly strange here but uh, i did add uh, both to this cello line and to the other head line um, to the other cello line i added uh, this tremolator effect tremolator uh, is a very cool effect by some toys there you can see it now in the center of the screen uh, there are a lot of different very cool uh, tremolo like effects you can create uh, with this plugin uh, and what i did here on uh, the cello line uh, and on the other cello line which i'm going to activate in a second uh, is that i used the uh, ableton uh, um, automation uh, so if you if you know what it is uh, this will be quite obvious to you but for those who don't uh, if you look at this red line uh, this is basically telling the software ableton in this case uh, that as the song plays uh, the depth of the tremolator effect uh, should increase you can see it starts from zero and it goes up 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 to one and it's very noticeable if you listen to it uh, you can now hear that the tremolo is starting to be more and more noticeable and uh, a very similar uh, uh, thing is happening on the other cello line uh, which is up here now you can see both cello lines at the same time for the second cello line, uh, I used uh, a library in contact, uh, and this is going to take a bit of time to load. Uh. Voila! I used the Stradivari cello, which is part of the Cremona Quartet library in uh, contact, uh, which I wholeheartedly recommend. It's a really good library, but you know, it's not the lines are basically the same, uh, it's just the the sounds that I used uh, are slightly different uh, and combined together I think they give a very nice effect uh, together with the tremolator effect and together with the piano which I'm going to add now I think they make for a very nice introduction there you go and then uh, what is now missing uh, as you will surely notice uh, are the drums uh, which are up here uh, and the drums uh, are, uh, uh, you can hear the drums at the end of the intro, is the crescendo. So I'm now going to add uh, the drums, uh, and uh, in a moment uh, you will hear them uh, coming in. And so this is the intro to the song. Now, before we move on with the rest of the song, uh, I do want to spend uh, just a few moments uh, on the drums because uh, I would like to show you the uh, contact library that I used uh, in order to simulate the drums for this particular song. And that contact library is called uh, Reality Drums. Here you can see it. And uh, I haven't used Reality Drums uh, in all songs. Uh, but uh, one thing that I really found it very cool about this library is, besides the fact that I think the sounds are pretty nice, uh, and I think uh, yeah, that you can hear it. Uh, you can find perhaps a slightly better sounding libraries, but these are okay. There are also different uh, kit presets uh, that you can use. Uh, oops, sorry about that. There are different uh, kit presets uh, uh, that you can use. Uh, 
uh, in this case I'm just using a very basic clean kit I just slightly changed the equalization uh, and in the track itself uh, I am using this plugin which is called sugar but I'm not going to go in that uh, uh, in this plugin on this particular video but the really cool thing about reality drums uh, that I use not so much in this song uh, but uh, uh, in, in other songs of the album uh, such as underwater selfies uh, is the fact that with reality drums uh, you have uh, a full array and very easy to use array of uh, um, standard sequences uh, uh, that you can basically activate with, ju with just one key uh, now I'm going to use the virtual MIDI keyboard here but of course you can use any MIDI input uh, uh, instrument for that uh, so if I click here for example there you go And uh, what's really cool is that for all of these different uh, uh, sequences, uh, of course, you can drag and drop. Uh, well, not of course, not every software allows it, uh, but Reality Drums uh, allows to drag and drop uh, the corresponding uh, MIDI sequence. Uh, so you can do quite a few uh, nice and cool things uh, with this uh, contact library, Reality Drums. Uh, so check it out uh, if you want to. And so we were just finishing with the intro and uh, from the intro we get uh, into the core of the song. So let me restart it from here and uh, there you go. Now you will uh, hear that the sequence uh, is always the same. I'm just adding layers uh, in the case of uh, the strings, uh, but there is of course something missing uh, if you have uh, listened to the song uh, and that the electric guitars, uh, which we're going to have a look at uh, in a moment. Uh, let us spend a little bit of time to analyze what I did, uh, to explain what I did there, because uh, uh, I have to admit it's something I'm pretty happy about. Uh, again, the sequence uh, of those electric guitars is very simple. It's exactly the same sequence of the rest of the song. Um, I did not use uh, any for the basic uh, lines, uh, any particular fancy effects. It's basically uh, just uh, here. There are two different uh, lines uh, for the distorted guitar. In both cases, uh, I used uh, uh, an Embrini Audio Cali uh, Dual plugin uh, and uh, what I did add to that uh, is this third line uh, which seems quite uh, noticeable you know if you look at the waveform uh, it doesn't look like a lot uh, but I did work quite a bit uh, a lot of the pathos of this part of the song comes from that line and uh, I'm going now to play uh, the different lines uh, only the drums and the guitar one by one and i think you will understand what i mean uh, when i talk about pathos so this is the drums plus one line of the story guitars uh. There you go, nothing particularly fancy. Uh, I like it, I really like power chords and electric guitars. Uh, and now we add uh, the second distorted guitar. Again, I start from the same uh, drums crescendo, which closes the intro and moves into the main verse. And here you can already see, you can already hear, the sound is of course richer. There you can already hear this uh, vibrato, which comes from the second line of the guitar. But the two lines are very, very similar to each other. Here you can probably hear the which comes from the second line of guitars. Now, I want to do something strange. That is, I would like you to listen only to the third line of the story guitars, uh, which will not be very nice, uh, I can tell you. And uh, because I want to listen to it uh, by itself, uh, only with the drums, uh, 
and then listen to it together with the other lines of the story guitars uh, and I think you will understand uh, the importance of layers, of combining layers uh, in ways uh, that uh, the, the, the total, the result, is much more than the sum of the individual parts. So let's start again and now this is only the third line of the story guitar. So Now what I did here, I used the pinch harmonics uh, on the electric guitar, uh, a lot of whammy bar going up and down, uh, and uh, I added these two really cool effects. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Uh, one is this, uh, the QL Spaces uh, effect, uh, which is a convolution reverb from East West. Uh, and the other effect that I used uh, is Penman, uh, which is another effect on Santos, another very cool effect on Santos. Uh, what Penman does uh, is uh, you can basically do programmatic panning uh, with many different presets. In this case, I'm using a hard bounce. Uh, so what you're hearing uh, is the harmonics uh, with the whammy bar of the guitar going up and down, sometimes faster, sometimes lower and the penman uh, bouncing uh, that sound uh, very fast uh, between the left and the right channel. Uh, it's not particularly nice to hear only by itself, only with the drums, and there you go, this is the wham bar, coming from very low and going up, 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 very slowly. All right, so this was only the third uh, distorted guitar line with the drums. Uh, Let's not try to listen to it all the distorted to listen to all the distorted guitar lines together. I need to go a bit back. Uh, there we are, and we activate uh, all of this. And uh, let's see. And now you can see in here how the power chords uh, together with the whammy body the harmonics uh, give a completely different feeling uh, to this particular sequence which is exactly the feeling that I was looking for and trust me it took me a long time uh, to record just this part the many many tests uh, of different pressure on the whammy bar, different harmonics, uh, different effects, uh, but uh, that's what you do when you try to create something uh, you try again and again until the result is something that you're really satisfied about. I'm going to stop this uh, and we're going to start it again, eh? but this time we're going to add uh, all the different parts that I muted so far. So in addition to the bars, we're also going to add the keyboards, uh, the piano, we're going to put in everything basically. So let's just start a little bit before the drums crescendo and there we go. After the distorted guitar sequence, uh, we get to the trumpet intermezzo, and you can hear it uh, here. And I would like to spend uh, just a moment uh, to deconstruct a little bit what I did there because it was quite fun actually. So, the trumpet intermezzo is basically composed of two simple. Uh, lines. Uh, one is the trumpet uh, legato, there you are, very standard uh, Ableton live instrument, uh, and uh, the other line is the trumpet staccato, and there you are again, uh, very standard uh, uh, Ableton instrument. And so what I did uh, is that for the trumpet legato, let me solo it so you, you will only hear it, uh, I just took the melody coming out of the harmonic sequence, uh, which uh, uh, I explained to you as the basis for the whole song, uh, A minor, C, F, E minor, G, and just played it with the trumpet legato.
there you are very simple and extremely boring and then what I did uh, I took almost uh, the same uh, melodic sequence uh, I applied to the trumpet staccato uh, as you might be aware and as the name implies a staccato means that in this case the trumpet plays only very short notes uh, but then I added uh, something else uh, which is this uh, ping pong effect which is just basically a delay effect uh, which bounces hard between the left and the right uh, not unlike uh, what I did uh, with the penman effect for the distorted guitars uh, and here you can see uh, the um, the ping pong effect uh, um, delays uh, the sixth and eighth uh, sixteenth of uh, of the note uh, for each beat and uh, now if you listen only to the trumpet staccato there you are And what you can hear is individual notes uh, which follow more or less the same melodic line uh, but then get delayed and bounced back between left and right and then if you combine the two lines so the trumpet legato and the trumpet staccato again on the basis of a very very simple melodic line which repeats throughout the song uh, this is what you get just the trumpets So this now sounds uh, very different. Uh, sorry, it's sometimes difficult to block the ping pong delay. This now sounds quite different because now the brain perceives the standard melodic line, uh, which is repeated in the song. It gives this kind of a uh, feeling of that's something I know. It's peace. It's uh, it's something known. But then uh, there is this bouncing uh, of the trumpets. Uh, which uh, uh, gives a certain feeling of unease uh, the brain really doesn't know what to expect because you have these different uh, uh, these different notes bouncing around left to right uh, and that's the kind of effect that i wanted to achieve in this intermezzo and then uh, if you listen to all the instruments together for the intermezzo so as the distorted guitars are closing and we move to the intermezzo this is how it sounds like important layer of the song especially in the second part uh, uh, starting with the trumpet intermezzo although there it's really very difficult to 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 hear you will hear it now because i'm going to decompose it from the rest of the song uh, are the backing vocals and uh, this i feel it's something that i added only later in the composition process uh, of touch me because I was not immediately convinced uh, I wanted to have these backing vocals uh, but I have to say if I listen to the final result I'm really happy that I did because I do think that these vocals uh, have that touch of uh, ethereal dimension uh, that really help the song convey what is its main messages at least according to me without further ado let's have a listen uh, to the three main uh, vocal lines uh, uh, the three main lines of the backing vocals uh, the first one uh, is actually you can if you really pay attention uh, you can hear it during the trumpet intermezzo which we already have a look at uh, and it's based uh, on a contact library called the uh, mosaic voices uh, here it is uh, uh, check it out if you want to it allows you to do some pretty cool effects uh, i have to say takes a bit of time to get uh, uh, accustomed to but the creative potentials are, are pretty impressive eh? and so now i'm going to play only the uh, this line of backing vocals eh?
so as you have heard again the same melodic line the same harmonic sequence but a different layer and if you try to listen to these background vocals together with the trumpets in the intermezzo i think you will feel how you will hear how these vocals really add to the overall uh, uh, vibe of the song so let me activate uh, uh, the mosaic voices is activated let me activate the trumpets uh, and uh, let's push back a little bit uh, and uh, there we are We activate uh, everything uh, you can uh, listen to all the layers coming together and although the first time you heard the song or even the second uh, you might not have uh, immediately perceived this particular line of backing vocals uh, now that I've shown it to you I hope you can understand it is actually important your brain uh, even if unconsciously has perceived it and it does it's a layer that adds a lot to the overall sound of the song to the overall vibe of the song So these backing vocals uh, are like a very nice warm carpet. Uh, uh, when you walk on it, I mean, your eyes are up there. You don't always look at the carpet, but when you walk on it, uh, you can feel it. Your body feels it. And so if we move on to the other two uh, vocal lines, uh, background vocal lines, uh, which start uh, immediately after the trumpet intermezzo, the first one uh, is based on another contact lottery which is called uh, Vocalize 2, the Gravity Pack 04. Again, check it out. Uh, uh, not, you know, a bit tricky to get your hands on it and really understand what to do with it. Uh, but once you understand, uh, really the sky is the limit uh, in terms of creativity. So let me play it uh, all by itself. very ethereal, very ghost-like and now if we combine it uh, with the other vocal line which is uh, again another contact library uh, output exhale uh, this time this particular vocal line the one based on output exhale also has uh, um, a penman effect uh, which we already looked at so it bounces uh, between left and right it does panning uh, uh, in this uh, again with a hard bounce midi so it really bounces very hard between left and right uh, and uh, let me very briefly play only the uh, output exhale line you can hear how it's bouncing very hard between left and right and then we add the vocalized two line and then you can hear the two and now we add the rest of the instruments uh, thing that I did in touch me is that uh, after the intro the focus is on the electric guitars uh, that's very obvious they're very powerful uh, but then the electric guitars fade away and uh, the vocals the backing vocals act as that sort of carpet which I told you about uh, and the, the, the forefront the melodic lines uh, are played by the strings uh, and in this particular uh, instance uh, there is this short passage with the trumpets and the trombone which i personally like very much as we move towards the end of the song uh, the melodic line that has repeated time and again throughout the song slightly changes 
creating that signal of tension that uh, uh, basically is sending the message okay now we are moving uh, towards the end of this story and that is very noticeable uh, let me show you usual melodic line and uh, there you are different uh, melody creating tension And here I would like you to pay attention uh, to the drums and the delay effect that applied. Uh. And again, the backing vocal rise in volume, uh, creating this additional tension uh, because in a moment uh, here we will have the guitars, which follow a very similar pattern uh, and uh, a very similar recording design I did more or less the same thing here on these guitars that I did at the start so I'm not going to repeat it again but that's what, what I was interested uh, to to show to you was this uh, build up of tension you hear that something is going to happen then almost silence just the piano the vocals start to raise again and you feel you hear maybe it's not conscious uh, but your brain and your heart knows that something is going to happen uh, and that something uh, is the powerful distorted guitar with the harmonics and the whammy bars uh, coming in again so with this we came to the end uh, of the song touch me uh, there is a lot more that I could say about how I technically composed the song, the various effects that I used. I didn't talk too much about the strings, uh, uh, although the, that is a very important part uh, of the song and something that took me quite a bit of time to put together in a way that satisfied me, but this video is already long as it is. I hope uh, I did manage to give you a little bit of a glimpse of my creative process uh, and also some of the actual tools that I used. I would love to hear from you if you found this video interesting, uh, if you are yourself uh, a composer, if you compose music uh, using computers, uh, maybe Ableton Live, maybe something else. Uh, I'm always very interested to hear about your experiences, so don't hesitate uh, to write to me, to like this video, to share this video, to leave a comment, uh, in general to give me your feedback. Thank you very much uh, and I'll see you soon.